Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Tonight we're heading back to Normandy, 1944, for a game of Chain of Command. All right, so we're back. Same board as last week. Uh, it may look familiar to you if you saw our bolt action game. Uh, we liked it so much we left it out, and I never had time to break it down, so <laughs> it uh, it worked out fine. Uh, we like to do this. We'll play a game of bolt action or Chain of Command, and then we'll just stick with the same board, and we'll try the, uh, the other game on the same board the next week. So that's what we're going to do this week. We're going to be using the same forces, British Airborne versus uh, Grenadiers, and yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, start talking about the terrain and stuff. So tonight uh, we're using the uh, Grassy Hill uh, Geek Villain mat again, as we did last week. Uh, still still an awesome map, <laughs> as it was you last week. should have changed it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have changed the mat and rebuilt on top of it now. But yeah, it's a great mat. Uh, put it, check the description if you want to get it. Uh, and like last week, um, hedges are pr pretty much the dominant feature on this board. And in Chain of Command, they're going to be 2-inch visibility and soft cover. And these fences are going to be 4-inch visibility and soft cover. These are high fences. Uh, all the buildings are going to be hard cover. The fields are going to be nothing. They're just for looks. There's a small fence here. This is just going to be soft cover, minor obstacle. And yeah, and, the, and then the, uh, the hedges are going to be major obstacles as well as these fences as well. And that's it for the terrain. So the mission we're using tonight is going to be flank attack from the rule book, as one we haven't played for a while. Um, so the way this is going to work is the Germans are going to be deploying, they're going to be defending. This is going to be their corner. They're going to deploy in this table quarter, uh, I can't remember, three or four uh, patrol markers. Andre is going to have two stacks of patrol markers, one on that two edge. Two stacks of three. Two stacks of three, and then one on this edge that will act independently of each other. He's, a, he's also going to get up to four free moves, and uh, after the patrol phase, Andre will place four jump-off points. I will place three jump-off points, and I'll get one free jump-off point within my table quarter. And the objective is for Andre to drive me off the board while keeping his force morale at three. Uh, we haven't determined the uh, force support yet, but we'll do that here in a minute. Uh, now we'll take a look at the forces. Here we have a platoon of British Airborne. So we're not going to be running these guys as elites tonight, just because their elites are just too good. Um, they make for <laughs> somewhat of a boring game because they're just so awesome. So we're going to run them as regulars. And our buddy Greg from Wargaming World suggested we give them a free red dice to kind of make up for not being elites anymore, but still give them you know a little bit of a of a buff. So that's what we're going to do. Run them as regulars with a free red dice and force rating for these guys we're going to say is plus three it's plus nine is elite and just kind of a quick calculation in our head and comparing them with the falsion jaeger uh, regulars versus elites we're going to call them a plus three so we're going to have two senior leaders so in charge we're going to have lieutenant andrew cox and he's going to have a sten assisting his going to be the platoon sergeant cody neal he's also going to have a sten uh, the rest of the headquarters section is going to be a Piot team, a sniper, two-inch mortar. And we're going to have two sections that are the same. So these have a corporal with a uh, Sten, and there's going to be a three-man Bren, a, a rifle team with five rifles and one Sten gun. So two of those, and then there's going to be a Bren section, essentially. It's going to be two Bren teams, three-man crew. And each team is also going to have one Sten gun, Sten gun in it, and then a sniper. So both snipers are just going to act independently as snipers, deploy as snipers, activate as snipers, move as snipers. Uh, so that's how the two snipers are going to work. Uh, and in command of the squads, we're going to have more, more of our patrons. So over here we're going to have, who is this, uh, Reese Dignan. Corporal Dignan is going to be in charge of this section. Here we're going to have Corporal Shea. And then over here we're going to have... Uh, Corporal Rick Seabald in command of the Bren section. And that is the British. Here we have our Grenadier Platoon. So this is the late war Grenadier Platoon. Now this is also plus three force morale. This is taken from the little uh, or tiny hordes updated force rating uh, table. So uh, in this one we're going to have in charge, uh, Lieutenant Timoteo. So these are pretty much the same guys that ran this platoon last week. So Lieutenant Timoteo is going to be our senior leader. He's armed with uh, MP40. And we're also going to have one Panzer Shrek team. And three identical squads. Each squad is going to have a NCO with submachine gun and two MG42 teams, two crew, 
and each each squad is going to have a three three rifle team and a two rifle team. There's going to be two Panzer Faust per. So in command of these, we're going to have over here Vesterman. In the green, we're going to have Lankowski, and then Kopke. Well, it's supposed to be black. I'll change that to black, but Kopke will be in command of third squad. And I think that's it. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll figure out what our force uh, support's going to be. Then we'll do the patrol phase. Done the patrol phase. Uh, force, force support. Andre had nine. I got four. Uh, you still need to roll your force morale. We'll give him a. Uh, should we give him the plus two bonus for elites as well? No point. <laughs> yeah, we'll give it to Sweet. him. <laughs> so he's an eleven. I'm at a nine. Uh, so at the end of the patrol phase, the jump off points. Andre placed four. So he's got one over there on the edge right there. He's got one kind of right behind the corner of that fence there. He's got one in this house up here, and then he's got his other one here in this hedge. I got four as well, so I have one on the edge here, one on the edge here, one back here, and then my free one I placed anywhere within my table quarter, I placed it right there. So that's the jump off points, so that's the force morale, force support. Now we're ready to go over plans. British plan, yeah, so. We're attacking in to that part of the town, which, uh, so he's got two buildings there, gonna make it a little uh, challenging, lots of cover uh, for both sides, but, uh, well, for support, start there. I brought another two inch mortar, just cause if one's good, two's way better, right? Um, I really love the two-inch mortar in this, and especially when I'm attacking in, having all of that line of sight blocking smoke is super handy. Uh, I also took a uh, engineering flamethrower team, just because uh, you know flamethrowers are good when you're trying to route uh, out defensive positions, and a 40 millimeter Bofors, just because I thought I might want a little bit of HE. Um, to try and pound down some of those uh, entrenched uh, positions. So, the plan. Um, you know, I don't know that there's really much of one, but Travis has a jump off point back here, and I'd like to make him deploy from it. So, I will probably try to come off of uh, these jump off points here and push a unit back in that direction and break off a scout team um, just to try and get him to commit at least uh, one uh, team over to you know this flank just kinda trying to pull him out of the way kind of a divide and conquer thing um, you know if I can get him to deploy a couple things over there that would be sweet I really see the bulk of my uh, forces coming off of this jump off point and coming in through this uh, side with uh, support from this jump off point. I'll probably have my uh, two inch mortars and my bofors um, with the senior leader off of this jump off point, kind of uh, orchestrating the whole assault and just really trying to. Um, you know, see where I can lay down smoke and, uh, you know, create a, uh, an opening. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens here. All right, so the German plan, I got four support points. I think what I'm going to do is just bring four entrenchments. I want everyone in hardcover. I have plenty of firepower. Uh, I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with his squads, no problem. Uh, I got plenty of concealment, so if the pregame barrage is in effect, which... Has pretty much decided most of the games we played lately, as the defenders have either not deployed at all or they're deploying piecemeal and just not doing much. So I promise to try to make a game out of this as the defender. Um, 
So I have plenty of places to hide. I got four inch visibility behind these so I can deploy in here with hardcover if I need to. I can deploy back here with hardcover and I can deploy into these built and at least into this building with hardcover. So I should have plenty of hardcover depending on which direction he comes from is which way I'll choose to go. Um, I will try to wait at least a couple of phases before I start coming in, even if there's a pregame barrage. Um, hoping he doesn't get a bunch of double phases and just swarm me. So I don't know. It's kind of a tough call. Uh, but I do want to deploy early. Not too early though, because if I deploy with my hard cover uh, and he's coming from the opposite direction, it might not do me a whole lot of good. So I at least need to kind of know where he's coming from before I commit to a certain direction. So we'll, that's pretty much my plan. Try to get everyone into hard cover and just go toe to toe with them. I got plenty of AT, I got a Panzer Shrek team, I got tons of Panzer Faust, so I'm not really too worried about armor. Um, yeah, so just hide out back here in my little table quarter and make them come to me, dig me out of the hard cover, and just see who wins the firefight essentially. So that's it. So we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so here we go. Andre's got the three red dice, which will be the Game albino Game World red dice. dice. Yes. All right, so he's got three fours. All my senior leaders are coming in. <laughs> a one and a three. Oh. All right, so with the three, he's brought in Corporal Dignan section over there. He's brought in the two-inch mortar section behind that fence off this jump-off point. And then inside the building, uh, Lieutenant Cox is deployed. And he is going to fire a smoke round from the two-inch mortar at the building here. And I just missed. A four. Hit if line of sight. Oh. So you do have line of sight. Okay. So there's just some smoke right here. Okay. So there it is. The smoke has started raining down on the German position. So we go on to the German phase. No, no, no uh, fives. Two, two, one, one, three. Pre-game barrage? Uh, no. No pre-game barrage. You sound surprised. I'm, I'm not surprised you're surprised. A little surprised um, because it's just so good. It as is. the attacker it is. but it, it does kind of make kind of lame games lately too yeah <laughs> so, that was kind of the main factor was it's like uh can i can i pull this off without the pre-game barrage i guess we'll find out okay let me think about this and i'm gonna just i'm gonna wait at least one more phase see if i can see a little bit better which way he's going to be committing whoa three fives and two fours interesting so sixes nothing well, on that die, it's nothing, but it's nothing otherwise, right? Or yeah. It, you would need, yeah. So fives are chain of command dice? Yep. So you got three points and then two fours. He's fired another smoke. That's all he did. Uh, he's had Cox order the guy to do it, and it landed six inches to the right, so it's kind of in between those two houses there. Still no commitment, just one section on the board for Andre. Double phase. Woohoo! Look at you go. And a point and a two and a four, huh? You can bring your, your big man in. Actually, I'm thinking about bringing a section in that window that's not covered by smoke and firing, trying to take out your two-inch mortar. So I could do another, I could fire at him and do another phase, maybe take him out if I'm lucky. Yeah. Westerman section has come in. I do have both of these windows here uh, to shoot out of. So I'm going to have both machine guns fire at the two-inch mortar. And hopefully I'll get to do it in the next phase as well, needing fives. Uh, one two three four only four hits only four <laughs> look at all these twos Holy cow. only four hits only four hits so just roll them right in here Andre if you can four hits soft cover so you got a dead and two shock which I think breaks them because if you lose a guy your leader's not attached um, so it's gonna be a dead guy and he took two shocks so yeah you got one guy with two shock which breaks <laughs> breaks the two inch mortar so 2d6 plus 6 back 7 plus 6 back run two inch mortar he's way the hell back there okay uh, all right, and then you gotta take a bad thing happens for team breaks. Five zero is good. A minus one. Yeah, minus one. All right. Okay. Well, Vesterman's driven off the two-inch mortar, and we have another. Oh, I still got 
a four. Door, no, I'll just move on to my next phase. The next phase, another double phase. Perfect. And another one of these and two and a three. Hmm. All right, so with the three, I'm gonna have Vesterman order his guys to see if we can finish off that last guy in the two inch motor section. Needing fives. Two, three, four, five hits this time, Andre. Two more, two fours. He's not dead. Oh, he got a six. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. So he's dead. So a bad thing for team wiped out. That's not Team wiped I out. Minus one. Yeah. So wow, Andre's down to nine just from that two inch mortar. So good job for Vesterman there. Well, so much for bringing stuff in. You cured me, Travis. <laughs> well, you're attacking. You have Bullshit. to bring stuff in. <laughs> you were attacking last game. Uh, so I and you, <laughs> you deployed oh. everything right here. Well, that was it. That we're was doing both. a repeat. That was bolt action. <laughs> All right. So we'll, uh, yeah, I think we'll move on to the next phase. Dropping one, a five. So I'm up to three and a one and a three. Question is, do I try to get Vesterman out of the building or just back off the windows or just go on Overwatch? Hmm, let me think about it. Let's have Vesterman's boys go on Overwatch. And we move on to Andre's phase. All right, so he's got uh, five chain of command points. One, two, three, three. One, two, two, three. One, two, two, three. First thing, uh, with one of the twos, Andre brought in Corporal Rick Seabald's Bren section off of this jump off line on the road here. Next up, he brought in a sniper inside there where the tractor is. And off of that jump off point back there. And I'll go ahead and okay. bring... All right, hold on. We'll this... do this first. And okay. then uh, we will... He's going to fire. Up here at Vesterman's squad. It's a miss. Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can spot him. I need a six to spot him. No. Nah. We saw a puff of smoke or something. All right. Maybe. All right. So uh, he's got one section left to bring in. Last thing he did was he brought Corporal Shea a section in between the Rat Bastard in there. And that's it. That's all of Andre's command dice. We move on to the German phase. One, 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 two. Hey. Hey, I could bring something in. <laughs> Still don't think I'm ready to. I'll think about it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm, I'm a little worried about Seabald squad, but... Okay, no double phase. But... But he does have a chain of command dice plus. now. Plus. And a pair of threes. pair of threes. Uh, first up, uh, he had Corporal Seabald's section is trying to move around the hedge here into the street. They didn't get very far. And then over here, Dignan section has just moved up about the same distance. Exact same, five so, and five. Yeah, so not a very good move for either one of them. I'd like to point out that Travis is not catching me cheating tonight. Should I uh, point it out? Oh, what are you, how are you cheating, Andre? Well, this is my albino die, right? Oh yeah, so that doesn't count. So I only got uh, two fives. Ah, uh, still, he's still at uh, six plus one. So, all right, yep. German phase. Oh man, I'm getting close. I'm at five now. And you're getting all my ones. One, one, four. Hmm. You're hogging all my ones. I don't even have anything. Oh, I got a Panzer Shrek team I could bring in with a one. Uh, okay, let me think here. I will wait yet again. Something I said I wouldn't do, but the way it's going right now, I think it's somewhat safe to do. All right, so nope, Andre, that's a five on the white dice. Okay, just seeing. I was just See if you're seeing, if, attention. <laughs> seeing if you were uh, taking my advice and not letting me cheat. So you got a couple ones, though. I do. Two ones, two and a three. Sniper's going to take a shot again up here. Four. It's a hit. All right, so uh, I guess I have to roll this, right? Yeah. So we'll just do it on this team here. Uh, no cover. A two, that's nothing. And I'll see if I can spot him. I don't spot him. I needed a five that time. Maybe I'll leave this back here just to try to remind myself of that. Okay, so that's one, one. All right, so at the end of Andre's phase, uh, 
the brought Seabald section has moved into this house. And then Shay's section has moved into the Rat Bastard. Sniper shot. And with the last one, he brought a, another two inch mortar in over here. I knew you would have a second two inch mortar. And I oh, and had he some fired smoke on the uh, back kind of, end of the yeah, building. Landed right kind of on the roof a little bit. And I think that's it. So German phase. Yeah. All right, I got a chain of command dice. Look at you. And then a one, a two, and a four. Sergeant Lankowski's squad is deployed in hardcover from this jump off point. Couldn't quite get the shot on these guys. They're not technically in the window. He didn't make it far enough. So if they were, I was going to move this over a little bit. But so we're in hardcover here. I just had to do that because I didn't want scouts to come out and suddenly I lose everything back here and I'm screwed. So they're out there and it's uh, straight into the British phase. A lot of stuff here. <laughs> so what do we got? Two fours, a three. No ones. Two twos. No ones. <laughs> so Captain or uh, Lieutenant Cox came out of the building. He ordered him to fire a smoke which blocked this window. He also ordered Shay's section to run out. They're blocked by the smoke. They shut this jump off point down. And then over here, Dignan's section has uh, moved out around the corner. And I'm going to end the turn, Andre. So all the smoke's going to go away. Overwatches are going to be gone. Um, yeah, so we'll end the turn. Need a good roll here. Some threes. Two threes, two fours, and a six. That should be enough to do some shooting. All right. Start off with Vesterman's section here, or squad. They're going to fire over there at Dignan's guys. They're within 18, so needing fours. Uh, one, two, <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're gone. In the open. So nine hits there, Andre. Yep. Now you gotta split them up because you got two teams there. So you got a Bren team and a rifle team. Rifles. Two dead. Bren. <laughs> four dead. Wow. This is not four dead here, right? Oh, wow. Bren team's wiped out. Uh, and then you lost two. This was a one. All right. So you lost. So roll for, roll for your leader. That was a four, wasn't it? No, it was a one. I turned it to oh. a four. Actually, your leader's automatically hit because you took six kills. So you can't roll under a six. So roll a bad thing or see what happens to your leader. He takes a wound. So he's going to just be wounded. Um... I suppose we're we'll to see where it comes yeah. out of. So in a four plus, it's he the Bren team has a guy left. No, so the Bren team's wiped out. We'll figure it out. So he lost the Bren team. Uh, Vest or uh, Dignan took a wound. And he lost two guys out of the rifle team. So roll a bad thing for team wiped out. That's always good, right? Yeah. Minus one. Now roll a bad thing for level one or junior leader wounded. That's probably minus, minus one. one. Hey, I'm all the way to seven. Wow. This is going to be a short game. He dropped to seven. Okay. So next up, we're going to have Lankowski's guys fire. Lankowski's squad at Shea's squad. Um, Eden Force. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hits. So we're going to have, uh, all I can see is this rifle team in the front. So everything is going to go on the rifle team. Soft cover. Wow. You had like lucky on that one. Only three shock. Wow. <laughs> that made up for your last roll. Isn't that? No, because oh. you're in soft cover. Soft Defense. cover. Nice. Okay. Well, Woo got lucky there. Not so lucky over there, yeah, but pretty damn much. lucky over here. And I think that's it for me. Um, I'm not going to bring my leader in. I'm not going to bring my other section in. So it's Andre's face. Andre is about to get lucky. No Look at that face. luck. 
A uh, couple fives, or A5, and then oh, three, print. three, yeah, two. Yeah, A5. All right, so to start with, Shea's squad, Corporal Shea, was here, got a really good move. I think you stopped at the edge of the building, though, right? Yeah. Okay. But he rolled like a yeah. 15 or something. He just moved up here and stopped at the edge of the building. And then over here, Dignan, the wounded Dignan, and what's left of his section, has moved across the road to the hedge, now out of arc of Vesterman's squad. And then Seabald's section has moved out of this house back into the street. And it is now the German phase. Hey, a chain of command point. Woohoo! Two fours, a three, and a two, which is pretty good. Yeah. Right, so I brought in, uh, who did I bring in here? My last squad, oh, it's Kopke. Kopke's squad has come in here in the hard cover off this jump off point. And we're going to fire at Shay's section. Shay decided to use her uh, or his chain of command dice to interrupt and move in the building, but got a really bad roll and with the shock, essentially moved nowhere. So Shay's section is going to have to take the fire of Kotke. Uh, minus the SMG. I think we're within 18 there. Andre, <laughs> if you could just double check to make sure we're within 18 there, that'd be great. Yeah, here we go, needing fours. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine hits, Andre. So I guess split them up. Rifle and Bren team. So nine hits. Put the uh, extra one on the Bren team. So two dead there. And two, two dead, dead and two, two shock. shock. So check your leader. It is the leader. All right, we'll figure it out. So, so Shea was killed. Um, Corporal Shea was killed during that fire. And another minus one on his force morale down to six already. Yep. And took a couple shock, lost so so this section is shot up, that section is shot up. He still has all his support off the board and a full Bren section under Seabald over here. Uh, so that was a three. I'm really tempted to lean out and Fire, lean out of the window with these machine guns and fire at these guys. Really tempted to do that. But then I'd be in the open for, well, what's going to shoot back at me? <laughs> <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything that can. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I can instead of uh, firing, instead of sticking my head out the window to fire this, I'm just going to drop a couple grenades out. Um, so anything but. I just, I just can't roll double ones or I'd fumble and drop it at my feet. Come on. Okay, that one makes it. The second grenade, okay, they both make it. All right, so two grenades are going to land right there. Four hits, yeah, so you got two teams left there. Yeah. Uh, Bren team, a dead rifle team, nothing. So just a dead Bren team. Your sergeant's already dead, so what do you got left? You got one guy left in the Bren team and then four uh, rifles, four rifle team, I think. I thought I had lost two out of the Bren team last time. Oh, so the Bren team is wiped out. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's why I took their shock away. Oh. <laughs> All right. Bad thing happened for team wiped out again. Oh, that's always good. Team wiped out on a six is a minus one. Andre's down to five already. And that's, I think that's it for, I think. Let me think here. All right, Andre's face, he's, uh, he's hurting. I don't know where the rest of the support is. All right, a five, two, three, two, four. He did bring a support. He brought a bow first. Uh, he did not remember that it had a junior leader with it, so he's been waiting to bring it on a one this whole time. Five hits. Five hits. All right, so that's going to reduce cover. And on to Vesterman's guys. We'll do... Uh, Three onto the guys over here. Two dead. I gotta get. I can't use those war gaming world <laughs> saving rolls. And then a shock. 
So let's check and see if it happens to be Vesterman. Nope. Just two dead guys. And then a shock on them. Okay. Well, that's all Andre's going to do. He's, uh, he's on the back foot now, so move on. A couple of fives and two twos. So finally, Lieutenant Timoteo's come in here. Since I know Andre doesn't have a tank, I've been just holding him back so that I could bring that Panzer Shrek in reliably to fire to Sherman. <laughs> so Andre did a good job of psychological warfare keeping Timoteo off the board. But he's in now. He's back here with these guys. He's in command range of them. So he's going to put uh, these guys here, Lankowski squad, on Overwatch, and he's going to have the two machine guns in here fire at the boofers. These fives. One, two, three, four, five, six hits. And that thing has no gun shield on it. So six hits on the boofers. Okay. We'll split them up between the uh, four guys. Okay. A dead and three, three shock. shock. So check your leader. Could be him. It is. No, it's not. Oh, more you only got one dead, yeah. Oh. So just a dead three and three shock. And yeah, that's it for me. British phase. Still haven't seen a British double phase yet. Hey, but I got another chain of command eye. Yep, and then threes. And a, two threes and a four. Cody Neal, uh, Sergeant Neal has come in here and he's attached himself to the Vickers, I mean the Bofors. <laughs> He took one shock off. The junior leader from the Bofors took two more shock off. He's going to have the Bofors fire back up at Vesterman, Eden Force. Not Three. as good that time. Three hits, so put uh, two onto the bigger team here. Nothing. And then one onto the other team. Nothing. Uh, Woohoo! <laughs> okay. And he's going to have the two inch mortar fire somewhere. Uh, we'll drop smoke in front of the window. Okay. That's a smoke. Yeah, it hits. All right. Now you can't see anything to shoot at. <laughs> this is true, but hey, we but blocked the windows. He's safe. Do it for the British phase. So he's blocked the window, and now we go to the German phase. One, two, f and three fours. A classic German roll. Uh, but that's probably enough to do what I need to do. I'm going to have uh, Timoteo, Lankowski, and this team here are going to shoot into there. I'll leave this team on Overwatch. I don't think they can shoot anyway just because of the way they're facing. So here we go. I'm uh, needing fours. One, two, three, four, five hits. And one more shock. These guys are going to be pinned. Okay, there it is. That's the shot. <laughs> All right, so that was a four for Timoteo. And now I will have Vesterman's squad with the two and the one are gonna assault down the stairs. Now Vesterman has charged downstairs to try to finish off these paras. And Andre's gonna get four. We're under attack. Oh, he's got a, yeah, he's got a termite on him. Maybe that's your good luck charm. If I lose this fight, that's not gonna be good. Here we go. So I got three sixes and a five. Okay. I think that's all you had left, right? And you got a six and a five. So let's roll roll your leader. Let's roll for oh your leader's dead, huh? I'll roll for my leader. <laughs> see if it's Vesterman. It is Vesterman. Let's see what happens to him. He's killed. Vesterman is killed. So bad thing for that. Level one leader killed. Minus two. Oh man. So I'm down to seven. So that means I'm going to lose. Um, we'll figure it out. So he lost. He's down to one guy. We're going to surround him and capture him. So let's say uh, patrol a bad thing, Andre, for section or something wiped out. Uh, a two. Um. Minus one. I'm down to four. Down to four. Still down to, still got four left. But he, uh, yeah, so he's dead. Or he's captured. 
because he broke, but we're surrounding him. He's not getting out of there. All right, and I think that's it for my phase. All right, we're just going to call it. The British are going to pull back. The Paras are pulling back. They couldn't crack the German line in this uh, French village. So we'll come back and wrap it up. All right, so yeah, it was, uh, well, I would say a good game, but it wasn't that great. <laughs> Our main problem was always the, or lately, the defender has never been able to do anything. Uh, but this time the defender actually won. Um, it was a great board for defense, though. It was set up lots of buildings, lots of cover, lots of line of sight blocking terrain. No pregame barrage. That might have helped a lot, or it would have. It always does. Well, if if you're pressing in fast, but honestly, uh, yeah, pressing in fast almost never works well. Unless you got scouts that kick ass. <laughs> well, it's uh, scouts and pregame American Amer yeah. American scouts and pregame barrage is a good combo. Yeah, yeah. very good. So yeah, the uh, Germans we lost, uh, Westermann was killed, um, but other than that, we lost three guys, and Andre lost a whole bunch of uh, paratroopers over here, look at them all, and he never brought in his other sniper, he never brought in his Piat team, and he had another three point, what was your last support? Uh, the uh, flame, engineer flame. Oh, uh, yeah, flamethrower team. Which I thought would have been handy for getting you out of hard cover, but... So what was your plan? Um... <laughs> I'm assuming it didn't work. Didn't really, I mean, <laughs> you know, um, I was uh, hoping to, you know, just lay down tons of smoke with the two mortars, have the Bofors to just kind of plink away with the uh, HE, and just... Uh, work my way up in close and hopefully be able to take a shot at you but um, it's uh, you know when you when you bring all the hard cover it's um, you know there's no way four points yeah yeah well my plan was your uh, was to bring the hard cover so everyone would be in hard cover yep and Kind of just wait to see what side you committed to. I didn't want to wait too long. I didn't know if you're going to bring the pregame barrage or not. So I was going to kind of wait around a little bit. When I found out that you didn't have it, then I knew I could wait a little bit more. When you put this squad in here, I thought, okay, maybe there might be a scout team, maybe try to hop this fence, but never did. So that's why I brought Lankowski in, in hardcover. And it's like, you're not going to crack that. There's no way. I mean, yeah. you'd have to get to the fence first and then there's not enough windows. Well, I was happy building. enough just you know, I shut down the one. Yeah, you did shut that one down. And I was in the building, but there was no, you know, once you had the hard cover back there, it's like, well, okay, that's nice, but I can't do anything from here. I mean. Nope. I was even considering, if you weren't going to, if you didn't shut that down, I was going to deploy in hard cover right in the middle of the road and just start blasting. <laughs> because these guys had that way covered. Yeah. And it's like, what are you going to do? Oh, I, the. Without a tank, I couldn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, and even with the tank, with this, all the AT I got, unless the tank would pretty much be forced to sit in the back and oh, fire. It, it, well, that's the only way you can take this on, is sit in the back and shoot from long range. I mean, it's that's yeah. That's really all you can do. And with 6 HE, like the Sherman, I think, is only HE6. You're not going to be... You got pretty good roll on that first Bofors shot. Yeah. Killed a couple guys, but... Overall, they're not going to do that much damage. Well, it, will, it, it would take. You a showed long time. what it did on the second. Yeah, shot. it would take. A, it would take a very long time. So, well, and that's when you you know, and and I remember that's really how these uh, defender games play out uh, when we're really uh, playing to win. It's uh, the attacker. You know, you can just punch out with small teams trying to get the defender to deploy. Yep. Never deploying anything alone. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a really slow, long, drawn-out uh, process it's to attack. It's definitely a process, yeah. you got to do it right. you got to set it up and try and draw them out. And, and, and I'd forgotten that. I, I've got a short enough memory that <laughs> I couldn't remember any of that, so it's like, yeah. He was thinking bolt action. <laughs> Paratroopers, we're just going to go attack, and we did. And, uh, yeah, I just got uh, obliterated. Yeah, and they weren't elites. Uh, if they were... I, I mean, I don't think it would have made it. It would have 
You would have been getting hit on one one higher. Yeah. Which would have dropped the number of hits you got. Um, I would have died slower, but I still can't do anything to you. But it, then I would have had more support. <laughs> I might have been able to bring my own tank. Yeah, well, or two. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah, I just, uh, you know, Germans in hardcover, uh, you got too much firepower yeah, they're coming tough. out. So all you can do is sit at long range and pound it with HE and you know that's, and on this board that's not easy <laughs> with this I thought about trying to set up some uh, covering fire just to you know minimize it and try and work my way in close but I'm not really sure why I was trying to work my way in close <laughs> what was I going to do assault um, uh, the flamethrower if he could have got that up there could have done some work but who knows but uh, yeah, the uh, not rolling ones for yeah the ones killed, and then not uh, remembering that that had a junior, a junior yeah, leader with it didn't help. That could have came out because we had a long though. conversation around. So if it doesn't have a junior leader, it can only come in on a one, right? <laughs> yeah, and I didn't know what you were hinting at. <laughs> well, I didn't want to tell you I had the Bofors because you still thought I had the Sherman. So yeah, so his psychological warfare backfired on him this game. Because you well, could have had that Boofers out here. Well, I think that eventually Investor, Investor probably would have won that firefight, I think. Because you're in the open. He was in hardcover. Well, I get more shots than you. Yeah, it's, I, you know, unless, well, yeah, it's, I just <laughs> didn't have, it. sort of like the, uh, um, forgetting that I couldn't just bring in a, uh, a mortar out in the open, too. Oh, yeah, that first mortar, that <laughs> poor bastard. Yeah, I couldn't pass that up. I'm like, okay, if he's going to put a just a two-man team just sitting out there, I, I, I got to deploy on that. So, yeah, so anyway, it was a, well, it was an okay game. <laughs> it was... The defense won, which is good. It's it, good it, to see them win one. It was how these games went uh, before we figured out that yeah. you can't uh, attack into... It was like a blast from the past, defense. like two years ago. This was or, like a game we would have played two years ago. Uh, probably more <laughs> like four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, again, uh, thanks to Andre for coming out. Thanks to all the guys on the uh, live stream who are hanging out with us and interacting with us. It's a lot of fun having these guys here with us, and we really appreciate it. And... Um, Go ahead and check out our Patreon if you want to join that and uh, get in on some of this stuff. We're gonna we got a bunch of extra stuff that patrons get, uh, extra games, bonus content, bonus campaigns, a lot of a lot of cool stuff, and it helps the channel get better. So um, yeah, think about doing that. And then we got a Facebook group and social media platforms like Twitter and Instagram. We're all over the place. So. Yeah, check us out there, and with that, we'll go ahead and say thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.